Hey, I'm Tanya from Lovely Greens and it's a beautiful June afternoon here on the Isle of Man and I'm in my allotment garden. And in case you don't know what an allotment is, it's basically just a community garden. It's just what they're called here in Britain. And I'm the secretary of this particular site in Laxey. We're called Lala and uh, I help to run it. So we've got about 30 plot holders. We garden in an organic manner and it's a really good group and we have beautiful views of the sea and of the village down below. And I thought I'd take you on a little tour around my plot to show you the work that I've done so far this year and to see what's growing and then maybe also take a peek on other people's plots to see what they've got growing there too. So let's go, let's go check it out. So we're going to start at looking at my plot from the northwest corner. I think that's the northwest. And uh, as you can see, we're on a slope and so I've decided to put in raised beds and I have one area at the bottom that isn't in raised beds yet but eventually it may be as well and I have a little wild flower area mainly perennials and a little pond which we'll get to in a second and I grow all manner of veg here although I'm not growing as much in the way of salad greens because I'm starting to grow those more at home just for convenience I also have a lot of herbs at home as well so in this first bed here I have quite a few gladioli down the center and the idea is to cut them for cut flowers this year and in the front there's a bare patch here I had some uh, spinach growing in there earlier that's finished this is all oka and it is also called New Zealand yam and I hope to get a decent harvest around Christmas time this year you can also see that I have wood chip paths. I put those in this year and it has actually saved my life as far as weeding is concerned. I understand that I'll have to replace the wood chips um, regularly, probably every year, top it up a, a bit, but we get them for free from a local tree surgeon and uh, they help to stop weeding or basically minimize it. Now we're just walking up to my water feature that I have kind of in the center of my plot. It's a little pond that I built this year. Well, actually I built it last year and the lining uh, ruptured and it just didn't hold water well. So I remade it, rebuilt it this, uh, I think it was February, January, February time. And it's doing great. It looks lovely. I've planted some marsh marigold and flag iris inside and I have tadpoles in it. I also have a resident frog and around it I've created a little bit of a habitat for the frogs so that when they come out of the water they you know will be protected from predators and, and have a, a place to kind of hang out. Now this area down here I really grafted to get it finished um, just a few days ago. It was the area in my allotment that I had left fallow for a while and I just needed to dig it over because I had all of my brassica seedlings just screaming to go out and so I've planted them in here and I have purple sprouting broccoli, kale, uh, cauliflower romanesca and uh, also cauliflower graffiti which is a purple variety which is interesting and also brussels sprouts and a couple of cabbages. So this is my potato patch and I have three rows of spuds in here this year, three different varieties and I have a, a, a first early, a second early, and this last row over here is a purple type of potato, and I absolutely love purple potatoes. They have so much flavor. They do look a bit odd when you roast them and cook them, or make them in a mash. Yes, purple mash, very weird, but they taste amazing, and I am a convert. That bare patch in the back there, I've just recently weeded and uh, cleared this area again and this is where I will be planting out my pumpkin and courgettes probably in the next week or so they're at home right now hardening off I've grown them and many of the plants that I bring out into my lawn and I grow them in the greenhouse first harden them off and then plant them out so in this patch I have some spinach growing and it's starting to bolt so that means it's sending up a flower spike it's ready to go I'll probably just um, take all of this down it's kind of too late now to really be sowing spinach outside because it does have a tendency to bolt and this is some lettuce some salad bowl lettuce 
and I'll be picking some of the leaves from the outside and, and letting it grow on. And lettuce is super easy to grow and also very quick. So here are my runner beans. I actually bought these plants instead of growing them. I did attempt to grow some runner beans that um, I got seeds for at our local seed swap, but they did not germinate and they, there is no shame whatsoever in going and buying some plants. If, if your plants uh, that you try growing yourself, you know, don't grow or, you know, if you'd just like to save time, there is absolutely no shame in, in going and buying plants. This area, so this entire kind of column of plants down the far side of my plot are all perennials. So I have at the very end there, I have a gooseberry and then I have quite a few blueberries planted along here as well and interspersed are some onions and calendula flowers and uh, various odds and ends and it's a, a little bit of a wild patch. It needs some weeding. So this is my strawberry patch and I have six rows of strawberries planted in here and the oldest plants are closest to us and they're three years old and I'll be replacing them next spring. So strawberry plants you replace every three years just to maintain productivity. If you've ever had a strawberry plant that doesn't produce fruit, it could be that it's just really old and it just needs to be replaced. Um, the ones in the middle are a year younger and the ones on the very end that haven't grown as much, those ones are the youngest. And you'll notice that there's some netting as well over this bed and I've pulled it back because I'm using EnviroMesh right now and bees can't get through EnviroMesh. It's generally used for uh, covering crops like carrots but I didn't have any extra netting so I put it over the strawberry bed, strawberry bed for now until the, the other netting arrives. And the netting is to protect the berries that are starting to ripen from birds. And, um, but there's plenty of flowers still on the plants and I want them to be pollinated by insects. So I've pulled it back for now and I will cover it back up again when I leave the allotment in a little bit. Along the top of my plot, I have raspberries growing and there are two types of raspberry in here and I inherited them with the plot. I'm not exactly sure what varieties they are, but there's a, a golden raspberry and also a uh, red traditional type of raspberry. So that's what's been growing and happening on my plot. So shall we go have a look and see what others are doing on theirs? Now this half plot, this is a smaller one, so it's half the size of mine. It always looks great and these were beginner allotmenteers last year so as far as I'm aware they actually had no experience whatsoever and just look at how productive it is. They are fans of brassicas so these all look like cabbages. And I've got them all netted against the cabbage white butterfly and they've got their potatoes growing happily. And then on the far side, so their, their plot ends where the, you see the end of the, the path there. And on that far side, a new allotment here from this year has just started. So they've been clearing the land and, and getting it ready. It's so neat seeing people's personalities come through with their allotments. And this is also a relatively new allotment here, here at Lala. And she started a couple months ago. And I love her little prayer flags. And it just looks very quirky and fun. So we're walking between two committee members plots. So I think these are Chris's onions and I see red onions growing there. And we've got potatoes. And I think we're now on Steve's plot. And I see that he's got some dwarf French beans growing here. So these ones don't climb up canes like, like my runner beans will. They stay quite compact. And I'll also be planting some of these in my plot next week. In the distance we see peas. They're looking lovely and lush. Potatoes. Yet more onions. Wow, this is the first time I've been over here in about a week and a half and this plot was uh, abandoned and 
it had been kept, you know, trimmed and, and tidy, but uh, it was pretty bad. And I had seen on our Facebook group that there had been some work here, but this looks amazing. So the, their idea is is that they're going to plant up half of their plot. So I'm presuming with this bed and, and maybe they're gonna build another one down below. And on the other side, you can see black plastic and they're going to keep that laid down to suppress the grass and the weeds and get to it maybe later this year. So how long have you had this plot? Just about three months now. Three months and you've done really well with clearing it. Well, yes, reasonably. What do you have growing on it right now? Do you have anything planted? We've got some onions, radishes and um, chard, sprouts and cabbages, peas and beans and potatoes. Brilliant. So that concludes our look at the Laxi and Lonan allotments. And if you have any questions or comments whatsoever, you know where to leave them below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And also, if you've not subscribed yet, please subscribe to Lovely Greens. If you enjoyed this video, there'll be more allotment updates coming in the future. Not July though, because I will be uh, backpacking through Portugal. Um, but August, we're going to have a recap as to how the allotment fares while I'm gone for an entire month definitely scared and uh, I've got lots of other videos on here as well so I think one of the the next ones I'm going to do is to show you how my honeybees are, are faring so thanks so much for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time